Sex is a topic that's often whispered about in our homes and shouted about in our streets. But do we truly understand its place in our lives? In a culture rich with traditions and spirituality, how do we balance our basic instincts with our higher aspirations? Let's explore the deeper meaning behind sexuality, beyond just right or wrong, and discover how to live a more conscious, fulfilling life. basics of life, you are born because of that, I'm saying. Not your sexuality, somebody else's. So, uh, we are born out of that, should we end with that? That's a question. It is not about right and wrong, it is not about morality. It is about the limited nature of what it is. Do you want to be stuck in it forever? Or do you want to think, this is all bad, I don't want to touch it? No. I would say, for at least thirty to forty percent of the human beings, it is only a passing thing within themselves. But because of social culture, they all believe they must go in that direction. Uh, there may be another thirty-forty for whom it's very compulsive need. Another thirty-forty percent are medium, they're like, they need it but not so compulsively. This is the nature of the population. I'm saying this with certain absolute sense of perception about this. Not everybody is on it all the time, but today society is cultivating them, cultivating them like this, if you're not it, you're not, no, not normal. So, what you're essentially saying is, all the yogis of the past were not normal, Gautam Buddha was not normal, nobody was normal except those who are on the pornography sites. Nobody's normal. No, this is highly exaggerated sense of physicality. There is a physical body, it has come into existence only because of somebody's sexuality, isn't it? So, s sex is a fundamental instinct in the body is one thing, it residing in your mind is another thing. That is happening because of a certain level of culture around you, that is happening because of somebody told you it is a sin, you should not think about it, it is just that. There is a dignified way of conducting it. For that we created institutions, we created a certain level of commitment because there is a fundamental need within a human being to conduct every aspect of our life with some sense of aesthetic, otherwise we will feel like animals. See, we eat, we can eat like this. When you're very hungry, you become like an animal. If you have not eaten for five days, you will eat like that with both hands. Like how… have you seen a, how a hungry dog will eat? <laughs> like that. A human being also will behave like that when the need becomes like that. Now, the same… but now we learn to sit properly when you're very hungry <laughs> So, I know <laughs> Some brahmachari is showing you his lung power. <laughs> now, let us take a moment to explore what this truly means. Sexuality is not just a physical act. It is a profound energy that can shape much of our lives, if we allow it to. It's crucial to recognize that this energy, while natural and fundamental, is not the entirety of our being. It is one aspect, one element of who we are, but not the defining feature. 
when we overly identify with our sexuality, or when society places too much emphasis on it, we lose sight of our greater potential as human beings. The act of bringing new life into the world is indeed sacred, but does it mean our entire existence should revolve around this? Should our life's journey be dominated by a single instinct, or should we aspire to explore the full spectrum of what it means to be human? Understanding this requires us to elevate our perspective, to see beyond mere physical desires, and to connect with the deeper dimensions of life. If we look at ancient spiritual traditions, they speak of this inner journey, a journey where we move from our lower instincts towards a higher state of being, where we are not driven by compulsion but by conscious choice. This transition is what differentiates us from other creatures. Unlike animals, who live predominantly by instinct, humans have the capacity to transcend their base impulses and align with a greater consciousness. This is not to say that sexuality or any instinct is wrong or needs to be suppressed. Rather, it is about understanding its rightful place in the broader tapestry of life. It is about acknowledging its limited nature and choosing not to let it dominate our thoughts, our actions, or our sense of self. The true essence of a spiritual journey is not about renunciation of the physical but the transcendence of it, to reach a state where these instincts no longer hold sway over our lives, where we are no longer puppets to our impulses but masters of our destiny. Mm. 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 Uh. <laughs> You would have done three ohms by the time he finishes ohm. <laughs> um, um, um. Because when something is very needed for you, just if you wait two minutes, you will see what is compulsive becomes conscious. Food, sex, sleep and death. These are four things which are compulsive. A human being distinguishes himself or herself from animal nature just by conducting these aspects of life also consciously. That is when, if you do these things like any other creature on the planet, the moment you see somebody like that you say, it's like animal, isn't it? So. Instinctually, there is a certain compulsiveness, but you have an intelligence which can make you conscious and conduct that aspect of life consciously. If you don't do that, then you see every day you're hearing about rapes and brutality and all kinds of things. It's the same desire he has that any other man has, but he cannot conduct it in an aesthetically correct way in a dignified way that his compulsions overtake his intelligence. So, first thing is, leave this nonsense about it being a sin, it being wrong, morality, that's not the point. The important thing to understand is the limited nature of what it is. There are many people who cannot stop eating. Hello? It's just a good thing about eating is, if you can't stop eating, it'll be immediately noticed by everybody who did not see you eating also. <laughs> Similarly, there are some people with sexuality, there are some people who fall asleep wherever they are. Satsang is a good place <laughs> It's happening, it's okay. So, uh, this is the fundamental thing. These basic instincts that we have in our bodies of food, sex, sleep and death, when you conduct these four things consciously, that is when you are a human being, including death, I'm saying. That is when you are a genuine human being. Otherwise, it's an evolutionary lapse. So what can I do, Sadhguru, it's evolution. 
No, no, that is the whole thing. Once you become a human being, evolution is by choice. Will you evolve or will you not? When you are a monkey, you did not choose to become human, but once you become a human being, what kind of human being do I want to be is your choice. At a certain moment of compulsion, you may think I don't have choice. No, you have choice. You have not learned how to exercise that choice. Still instincts are there, but you can conduct it by choice, not by compulsion. That's the difference. All of you are born out of sex, but should you live for this for the rest of your life? This is a choice. This is a choice. It is an element of your body. It is not the whole of it. It is an element of who you are. It is not the entirety of who you are. Essentially, it is a longing. What we long for can be transformed, isn't it? When you were a child, you were longing for a peppermint. As you grow up, you long for something else. Right now, you're a young adult, you're longing for something. But longings keep changing, isn't it? This longing, will it cha change by the compulsions of time or will it change by choice, by conscious choice? It is not about you must give up this, you must give up that, you must become like this, you must become like that. There are also ways for that, that one who wants to transcend can transcend. It is not a giving up. If you transcend, you are free, free from everything. But the most important thing is, even when you are in it, are you a conscious choice or are you a compulsive animal? This is the thing, because the essential difference between a human being and animal is their instinctive reaction to life. We are a conscious response to life. Exercise that. It's all right, you don't have to feel guilty, you don't have to feel, oh, I am sexually driven, so I am not spiritual. You're driven, so you can make it into a spiritual process. Think about it this way. Each individual's relationship with sexuality is like a spectrum, not a fixed state. For some, it may be a fleeting interest, passing through their lives like a gentle breeze. For others, it might be a more persistent need, something that feels almost essential to their sense of well-being. And for others still, it might occupy a middle ground, important but not overwhelming. What we must understand is that this diversity in experience is not a flaw but a fundamental feature of our humanity. It reflects the vast range of human expression and experience. To judge or compare one's sexual needs or desires against another's is not only unhelpful but also misses the point entirely. Instead, we should seek to understand why this diversity exists and what it can teach us about ourselves and our evolution. You see, our experiences are shaped by so many factors, our upbringing, our culture, our personal inclinations, and even our spiritual aspirations. When we acknowledge this, we can start to appreciate the richness of human life. We can begin to see that sexuality, like any other aspect of our existence, is subject to change and transformation. It is not fixed, it evolves as we evolve. As we grow in consciousness, what once seemed all-consuming might become less significant, not because it loses its importance, but because we start to see it in a new light. We begin to understand its role within the grander scheme of our lives. It is this understanding that can lead us towards a more balanced and harmonious existence, where sexuality is not something that controls us, but something that we consciously engage with, with full awareness of its place and purpose. This shift in perspective is what ultimately leads to freedom. Freedom from being driven by our base instincts and freedom to express our true selves, beyond the confines of any single aspect of our being. This is where the journey from compulsion to consciousness begins. It starts with recognizing the diversity of experiences and honoring each one, without judgment or comparison. It is about understanding that our journey is unique, and so is everyone else's. Instead of being driven, if you become the driver, that is the spiritual process. Hmm? You want to be driven by something, or you want to be the driver? 
If you are the driver, that is the spiritual process. As we reach the conclusion of this reflection, it is vital to understand that every choice we make is an opportunity to define who we are. It is not just about choosing whether to engage with our sexuality or not, but about deciding how we want to live our lives. Are we living consciously, or are we simply reacting to the impulses and desires that arise within us? This is the real question. Conscious living means that we are aware of our actions, that we understand the implications of our choices, and that we are actively engaged in the process of shaping our destiny. It is about moving from a reactive state to a proactive state, where we are no longer at the mercy of our instincts but are guided by a higher intelligence. This shift from compulsion to conscious choice is the hallmark of a truly evolved human being. It is what separates those who live life on autopilot from those who live with intention and purpose. When we begin to live consciously, we start to see life in its entirety, not just through the lens of our desires. We start to appreciate the interconnectedness of all things, the delicate balance that sustains life, and the profound impact that our actions have on the world around us. We understand that every choice we make, every action we take, reverberates far beyond our immediate experience, influencing the lives of others and the fabric of existence itself. This awareness brings with it a sense of responsibility, a recognition that we are not isolated beings but part of a vast, intricate web of life. It invites us to consider, deeply, the kind of impact we want to have on this world, and the legacy we want to leave behind. So, as you go about your life, remember that every moment is a chance to choose consciously. Ask yourself, am I living in alignment with my highest values? Am I making decisions that reflect my true self? Am I contributing to the well-being of others and the planet? These are the questions that guide us towards a more meaningful, fulfilling existence. And remember, this is not about being perfect. It's about being aware, about making choices that are aligned with who we truly are. It is about living with purpose, with clarity, and with a deep sense of connection to all that is.